YAML is a popular programming language because it is human readable and easy to understand. Let's take a look at a YAML snippet of a very useful YAML task, the .NET Core CLI task. We're going to use this task to test our .NET application. Okay, that was pretty dramatic. But here we are in Azure DevOps, and I've created this new project. We're going to use the repo that comes with DevOps as opposed to uh, GitHub, which we used in a previous award-winning video. We're going to create a solution with unit tests, or maybe just one unit test. And then we're going to build a pipeline using YAML to run that test. It's pretty easy to create a repo. You click the repo and then copy. Jump over to Visual, Visual Studio. Say I want to clone this repository. Um, all right, clone it. It's going to ask me to connect to DevOps. I'll log into it rather. And now that we've done that, let's create a new project. We'll just go with the console app. Good old console app number seven. Let's put it into that repo we just created. So there we've said this is the location for it. Next, we're using .NET Core 3.1. There you go, our Hello World app. Let's add a new function that we can test, or new method. And this will return a Boolean, and we'll call it is it a big number because it is going to tell us if the integer we pass in is a big number or not. And I think we can all agree that any number over 100 is, is pretty big. Most mathematicians would agree with that anyway. So if x is greater than 100, then true else false. Let's make this public because I'm going to show you a trick. You say, well, how do we make a unit test from here? You just right click on it and on the context menu it says create unit test. For now we'll just take the defaults and you can see over here that it has created a test project for us. And it even made a test named after our function. So let's use that and we will assert That is true. Uh, first, before I do that, I have to create an instance of our program class because we need that to get to our function. Assert that is true that this function, if we pass it 101, that's more than 100, and it'll be true. It's a big number. It might be one of the biggest numbers. Um, science really hasn't come up with a opinion on that yet. Now we can run all tests just to make sure it works. And it should pass. It did. So now we're ready to check this in to the repository. So I'll go here. It says I have to connect to do that. So I will connect. I will pick the correct repository and then I will uh, commit it. Great. Now using uh, Snads and Transition, let's go back over to the project and DevOps and make a pipeline.
Okay, so now that we've pushed those changes up to our repository, which of course anybody would do, it's time to build the pipeline. So we'll go to pipelines and we'll create a pipeline. And like I said, we're going to do this with YAML and we're using Azure repos. So I'll just select that as a repository. And let's, let's mix it up a little bit. Rather than take advantage of stuff they've done for us, let's use the starter pipeline here. And you can see it has things we don't really need, but it's nice that they provided that for an example. We'll take that out. Now there's two things we can do. We can do it manually, or we can use this assistant over here. And the very first thing on this assistant is build, test, package, or publish, and we want to test. So let's select that. And what command do we want to use? Test. And you might say, you know, where's all this coming from? Well, if you remember in the beginning of this video, when I was showing how fun the documentation is, you can see that here for this task, we have all these commands, build, push, pack, publish, restore, blah, blah, blah. If we look here, build, pack, publish, restore, blah, blah, blah. So it's all documented. You just have to know where to look. We're going to go with test. And the path to the project, you can use wildcards. So we're going to say, you know, starting with all the folders you find, use the console app console app one tests because that's was our test folder and use any project you find in there. Of course this gets a lot more complicated when you have more projects or whatever but right now it's pretty easy and if we do that it builds it out for us. Like I said we could have done it manually and for example that command we saw in the documentation about projects well that's in there too it's right here I'm not quite sure how it can be optional you get need to tell it where to look for the test but all these things can be added so let's save that and run it and see what's going on. Project files matching the pattern were not found. Okay, so it's not going to run any tests if we can't find it. So let's see what I did wrong here. Um, edit. We need to edit this. Oh, I have lots of... Lots of little tick marks. Okay. Maybe that is the right way to do it. Let's try it again. Uh, we can see now that it's finding these projects. It's going to run the tests. And it said past one. Now the cool thing about that is that if you go over to the test plans and you look at the runs, here's a run we just did, 11.58. 11.58 at night, that's how much I want to make this video. And click on it. Look at this. Charts, graphs, data, files you can download. It's pretty cool. Couple lines in the YAML gives you all this stuff. Okay, so that's it. I really just wanted another cool transition. Hope you liked it.